there's um, a number of questions on how, how this process compares in terms of uh, identifying tops and bottoms in markets. Mm. Uh, maybe you could sort of just give a minute or two just how you think about tops and bottoms in markets and then they can sort of infer from there. Well, tops and bottoms in markets are, are different sometimes uh, because they don't line up perfectly in, from a timing perspective and tops and bottoms in uh, exactly. economic data. Yeah. So again, uh, tops and bottoms in markets are pretty easy to define by my methodology, which is a series of lower highs is the topping process mm -hmm. and a series of higher lows is a bottoming process. So again, when you get a topping process, or let's do the bottoming process in gold, for example. Uh, show that chart one more time. Um, gold uh, is a short, by the way, when you're in quad two. So when you're in quad one and two for eight, nine, 10 quarters in a row, uh, gold was a terrible place to be unless you were shorted all the way up until that changed in October. But as you can see, as you're going throughout the summer months, the, the low actually the gold made was actually in August. So you can see there in July and August, it was collapsing to a cycle low. So a cycle low for the economic cycle would be in conjunction with the cycle peak in inflation and interest rate expectations. So again, as that cy economic cycle peak was peaking, gold was pretty much on time in saying, I'm done making lower lows. See that? There's no lower low there after August. Yeah. So then it's higher lows in September, higher lows in October, higher lows in, you know, then you, you get the breakout, now you got higher highs coming off higher lows and it runs squarely in conjunction with the economic cycle. Because what is gold like? Gold likes lower real interest rates. Where do interest rates go? They go directionally where the, both growth and inflation are going or our GIP model's going. So that's how we think about it. And again, nobody else is gonna say that because nobody else has the four quadrant model and certainly nobody who's trying to copy it currently has my trend signal. So again, they're not giving you that series of lower highs and, and higher lows within the context, don't forget, of the three-factor you know, price, volume, and volatility trend signal. So again, that's what I use to augment that. Yeah, and I will make one point. I made this point uh, last week. Real interest rates hit a new cycle low on the 10-year duration last week. Um, so both gold and real interest rates continue to signal that the prospect, so prospective outlook for the U.S. economy continues to be negative on yep. the rate of change basis and growth, inflation, and most likely profits. We'll see. Real rates on the 10-year hit what? Like 25 bips. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a new cycle low. New cycle low. And so you, the, obviously the Fed expectations in terms of easing have come into the equity market in pricing terms. They not necessarily have come into other parts of the fixed income market and certainly not in the currency market. You're not yep. seeing that either. We should see, I mean, if you're looking for a point that lines up, and again, this is the main point, is that they never always line up. I shouldn't say that never. I'm using the wrong words, I apologize. Uh, they, they don't always line up, okay? So again, if inflation bottoms here at some point in July, August, September, where we have it bottoming, then the relative gains for gold might peak. I mean, that, that, that would be the way to think about the example that I just gave you. Because as, interest, as, as, as inflation expectations start to rise again, i.e. it's not gonna be quad four in Q4, it's gonna be back to quad three, inflation's gonna start to go back up. So again, bond yields may not like that so much. And that's something that Darius talked about, I'm, I'm sure, in the last couple of weeks while I was away. Uh, because again, as you go further into Q3, what's after that? Q4. Mm -hmm. And in Q4, you're in quad three, you're not in quad four. So before you go bananas on that, just uh, enjoy the fact that last week you're long quad four, because that was a quad four week.